Adrian. Hope all is well for you. Uh, I've noticed you've been tweeting in the last day a lot about George Floyd and what happened in Minneapolis. I was wondering if you could share with us your thoughts and, and your feelings on what's going on right now. Um, you know, situations like this are, you know, just tough. Um, just um, feeling as though, you know, you can be in situations like that um, and seeing a lot of situations like that repeat itself. Um, you know, it's a sensitive subject for a lot of people. Um, but I think it's something that um, needs to be more than just talked about. We need to start coming up with, you know, different um, solutions to um, avoid situations where, you know, um, people are losing their lives. All right, let, let, um, let's go to Mike Clemens uh, in uh, Milwaukee. Hi, Adrian, Mike, how are you? Hey, how you doing? Tell me what, uh, how different this defense is going to be without Blake Martinez as your guy, you know, in the huddle. Um, you know, um, it's going to be a little adjustment as in, um, you know, he's the one that's uh, bringing in the plays every time. Um, but, you know, we have a lot of players back. Um, and um, this is a lot of our second, second year in the system. So um, I think uh, we can make up for it with, um, with our communication and um, us getting together whenever we, you know, get to um, get back together, um, you know, we, we can start to, you know, hear a different voice in the, locker, I mean, in the, um, in the huddle every play. All right, let's go Stephanie Sutton. WISN. Hi, Adrian. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi. Um, well, I hope you're staying safe. I just have a question. Are you concerned at all that there won't be an NFL season? And if there is one, how safe do you think you will feel out there playing? Um, you know, um, as times go, um, time goes by, um, we're starting to learn more and more. Um, and, um, you know, we just, uh, I'm just starting to feel more and more comfortable, um, you know, with myself and with the season. I, I don't, I really can't say um, what's going to happen with the season. Um, you know, as it looks, you know, everything seems to um, be pointing towards that we're, we're going to be playing. So um, I'm just preparing myself like, like we're going to be playing come fall. And um, we'll see from there. Um, like I can't make a prediction or saying I'm going to do this or I'm not going to do that. So, all I'm doing is preparing myself, um, you know, just like, you know, it was uh, any other season. All right, let's go to Steve with the AP. I was just checking to see, as a defense, as a secondary, are there any kind of, like, team bonding activities that we're doing virtually to kind of build that chemistry when y'all are scattered about the country? I didn't know how y'all were kind of doing that. I mean, um, you know, we have our meetings, um, you know, weekly. Uh, we talk to each other, catch up on each other. Um, not as much that we do as an entire group, um, but um, for the most part, we have the, ex the exact same group. So um, I feel like we, we built that chemistry with one another that, um, you know, as soon as we see each other again, we're just going to be, you know, um, you know, just like we never left, you know. Uh, so, um I don't think that, you know, the chemistry thing is, you know, you know, too big of a, a thing when it when it comes to us as in, you know, we, we basically have everybody back in the secondary. Let's go to Rob Demofsky of ESPN.com. Adrian, hope you're well. I'm just curious with the uh, the injury that you had late in the NFC Championship game, the pack, how was that coming along? And was it just rest or did you have to have any procedure done? No, I didn't have to have any uh, procedures done. Um, no, it, um, you know, it healed up, healed up pretty good. I, f I feel great. I'm 100% right now. Um, so, yeah, yeah I'm, feel I'm, I'm feeling good. All right. Let's go Ryan Wood, Green Bay Press Gazette. Hi, Adrian. Hope you're uh, healthy and well. Everything's good. Uh, I'm curious just as – You've had some time now from this NFC Championship game, and it's lingered into the offseason. How, how much residual is there from what happened on the field? How much motivation has there been this spring to, uh, you know, even virtually to, to get back after it? Um, anytime you get that close, you know, um, you know, you're one game away from, 
going to the Super Bowl, you know, it, it hurt his things. But um, right now we're all on the same boat. Um, we have to start fresh. Um, you know, leading to the season, we have to become the best team we possibly can be. Um, and and then take advantage next time, you know, that we're in that situation, that we have that opportunity to get to the Super Bowl. Let's next go to Jason Wildy, Wisconsin State Journal, ESPN Milwaukee, and The Athletic. Thanks, Nate. I'm not sure everybody needed to have my resume there. Hi, Adrian. Um, I'm wondering, you touched on year two a couple of times there. You know, it's actually year three for Coach Petten, but there were so many of you guys that were new last year. What was the experience like last year, and what are your expectations now this year because you've got – that time together that you didn't have going into last season? Um, just, you know, at this point last year, I really didn't have a grasp of the playbook. Um, now it's just like, you know, already knowing something and then reviewing everything, um, getting the little details and the, the amount of details um, that it takes to play in this defense. Um, and, you know, I feel like that's going to you know, make me personally a step faster, um, you know, to the ball, step faster, um, able to communicate a little bit better. Um, and I feel, you know, I feel the same as, um, for a lot of my teammates. I think um, in the second year of learning something, um, you're not just trying to get it in and uh, learn a playbook. Now you're trying to uh, perfect the playbook. Um, so, you know, I, I just feel like as a defense, um, you know, we should be, you know, clicking a lot faster and just, just off of, um, just knowledge of, of what we have to do and what, um, what our assignments are. All right, next let's go to Mike Spofford of Packers.com. Yeah, Adrian, thanks for the time today. Um, just wondering what your first impressions are of Coach Gray um, and what uh, you think and hope uh, he can do for the secondary this year. Yeah, um, he's been in the league for a while. He's played in the league. Um, has a lot of experience, has had a lot of success um, in the league. And, um, you know, already, you know, just um, learning a lot from him, just from um, Venus that we've had. Um, we see his his stance, his viewpoint on, um, you know, playing the secondary, uh, playing in the secondary, playing in the league. Um, you know, I just feel like, um, you know, he, he has a lot to, a lot of knowledge. He's seen a lot. Um, he has a lot to, to give to this um, young secondary one. All right, up next, let's go with Olivia Reiner of Green Bay Press Gazette, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, Gannett, Wisconsin. Hi, Adrian. Hope you're doing well and staying, st staying safe. Um, I'm wondering now that Tremont is currently no longer with the team as you personally as the most veteran defensive back in the room, how do you go about trying to incorporate aspects of his leadership that he brought or um, just kind of doing your own thing um, in that room? Um, I mean, um, I'm big on all I can do is uh, be myself. Um, you know, I can't change up, you know, you know how I am or um, I'm not a rah-rah guy, so I can't just, you know, transform into that. Um, but, um, you know, Jermon wasn't, you know, that type either. Um, you know, Jermon led by example. Um, he had a lot of knowledge. He, he um, you know, he was just always there, um, somebody that you can count on. So, um, you know, and I learned a lot from him last year, you know. I, I, you know, um, just as far as taking care of your body, just as far as, you know, how to deal with certain things um, on and off the field. So, um, you know, I just want to be that, um, that leader in that way, um, whereas um, people can, you know, see by my actions how I live my life. Um, and just there um, and reliable for, um, you know, people to count on. All right, next we're going to go to Josh Moser, WLUK-TV, Fox 11. Hi, Adrian. Hope you're doing well. My question is, what have you learned most about yourself during this time of the coronavirus and any of that reflection you think it'll make you a better football player when you're able to step back on the field? Um, I learned about myself. Um, not too much. It, it's just, um, you just have to find things to do. I, I've just been um, keeping busy. Um, you know, um, it do make you patient, that's for sure. Um, you know, because, you know, it's a time where you, you have to stay in the house. And, um, you know, I have two, um, you know, 
two sons and um, they teach you a lot about patience and uh, just with them, you know, running around the house and things like that. Um, but with all of this is, you know, it made me do, it made me um, appreciative. And, you know, I was telling somebody the other day, man, I wish, you know, you know, I know a lot of people complain about OTAs, but right now, you know, I'm wishing, you know, I was back in OTAs with, you know, with structure, just being around your teammates, um, you know, even if it's only for four days a week for a couple hours, um, you know, it, it's just that structure. You're so used to being in routine and um, things like that. So, um, you know, uh, just keep myself busy, giving myself structure and, um, you know, just a, appreciating, um, you know, the little things like, you know, just, just being around your team. All right, we're going to next go to Jim Osarski with Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Hey, Adrian. Um, curious, I, I know you guys kind of just roll with rule changes as they come, um, but it, a proposed rule change would be a fourth and 15 onside kick option. So I'm curious from your perspective, um, the idea of maybe you guys thinking you get a stop, you get off the field, and now you're told you've got one more fourth and 15, which – I don't know. I, I guess just your thoughts on maybe that scenario and maybe how that may affect the mental mind state. You know what I mean? Because you guys are usually kind of thinking that that could be over and the team may be able to kind of pull that out on you at any point. Yeah, um, I think it'll change the game for sure. Um, you know, I don't know whether it's, you know, good or bad um, because, you know, if we have the ball, you know, um, I like our chances better with the rule. Um, so, um you know, we, we'll see a play out, you know, if it happens. And, um, you know, we get into those situations, we'll see how it play out. Um, I, I really, I'm really, you know, kind of, you know, indifferent to it. It, it doesn't, um, you know, I approach it when, you know, when the time comes. You know, I, I think about it more when the time comes. But, um, you know, it seemed, you know, it seemed fun for Madden, though. Um, you know, you, you never, you're never out the game with Madden if, if, if that's the case. All right, next we're going to go to Matt Schneidman with The Athletic. Adrian, I'm curious. I remember you saying something on, on Twitter about Devin Funches after he signed. Did you guys, or, or obviously you did in, in college, um, did you have a relationship with him when he was at Michigan and you were at Penn State? And what do you remember about going against him then? Um, yeah, I played against him uh, um, you know, a few times in college. Um, and then um, I went to IMG with him. I trained with him um, leading up to the combine as well. Um, so you know, I, I've had a you know a lot of time with, spent a lot of time with him. Um, you know, he's a um, a big red zone threat. You know, he played tight end, so um, you know he um, he has that body, that frame um, to box out. You know, box out defenders when you're going to get the ball. Um, so you know, I, I think um, he would fit in with the you know offense pretty well. Um, you know, in a, and in the locker room, you know, he's a good guy, so um, he he fit fit in great in the locker room as well. Uh, next up's gonna be Wes Hodkowitz with Packers.com. Hey, Adrian, uh, thank you for doing this. Uh, I wanted to ask you quickly just about your foundation. I know that's something you've been active with the last few years, but obviously, you I think you had that donation involved with the COVID nineteen uh, pandemic and how that related to Baltimore. One, uh, what was your motivation for that, and two. Uh, what has that process been like, you know, trying to find ways to, to give back to your hometown? Um, you know, that that's always been my goal, um, you know, since I was young, just, just to always give back to my community. Um, you know, always giving, you know, you want to affect change, you know, where you're from. You want, you want to see um, people, you know, living better um, and you know, and, and you feel like in, in a situation like this with COVID where um, me not being able to go to work doesn't f as affect me as much as um, it does to, you know, the next person or somebody that owns their own business that's getting closed down or, um, you know, anything like that. So, um, you know, I, I just wanted to personally donate some, you know, I, um, donate some, some money for, for people to have food, for, um you know, for children, um, you know, who are in households where um, they have to be home all day. So, you know, with, you know, that's more meals that the, the parents and the families have to uh, provide, you know, within the household. So, um, 
you know, things like that. It's just something that you think about and you think about and you count your blessings and, you know, your situation and you want, you know, you don't want, you know, to be in your situation and have, you know, see other people struggling like that. All right. Next up, we're going to go to uh, Bill Huber, Packers Central, Maven Media. Hey, Adrian, how you doing? Yeah, good. How you doing? Good, thanks. Um, you were obviously in, in Darnell's shoes a handful of years ago. Where does a safety make the big gains year one to year two? Um, I guess the, you know, the playbook, um, knowing to expect coming into the, the following season. Um, you know, being around your team and your situation, um, I feel as though, you know, coming to year, year two, um, you know, we have these, the same secondary, so um, you know, he knows, you know, where I'm going to be, the, you know, who the corners are and things like that. So um, I feel like, you know, he can make a, a big jump in that way. All right, next up, let's go to Andy Herman. Hold on, hold on, Andy. There we go, go ahead. Hey, Adrian, thanks so much for taking the time today. I'm actually kind of piggybacking off of Bill's question uh, just a little bit. You obviously had the unique perspective of playing next to Darnell a season ago. Uh, what was your kind of assessment of Darnell from last season and what can he do to kind of make that jump in year two and what's his ceiling this season? Um, you know, he's a very, you know, smart football player. Um, he picked up on everything, you know, really fast. Um, you know, he, and he's always going to get better with time. Um, just learning the speed of the game. Um, just, just learning the, the certain things that, you know, you can get away with in college that you can't in the pros. But, um, you know, I think he, you know, he, he excelled and he improved week to week. Um, and then with this off season and then, um, getting next, next season, um, next season going, you know, I feel um, as far as the, you know, the mental aspect, not just learning the plays, but learning um, NFL offenses and what they like to do to attack you. All right, we only have time for a few more. So let's go to Steve of the Associated Press again. Yes, I was just wondering if the possibility of y'all playing this ball in front of no fans or limited number of fans, what kind of impact would that have for you as players, how different an experience would it be for you and how would it kind of change your approach? Um, I mean, it would be different, um, you know, but I mean, we, we play, we practice without fans and, um, you know, to be honest, like, I, I don't think it's going to affect my approach at all. Um, you get out on the field and you're playing football, um, you know, we don't have fans, they don't have fans, you know what I'm saying? So it's not, um, I don't think it's an advantage either way in that aspect. So, um, you know, if that's what we got to do, that's just what we got to do. Um, I'm just going to go out there and play. All right. Second to last question, Josh Moser, Fox 11. Adrian, again, um, quick question for you on the whole PI situation. The league basically said they messed up as a secondary player and a safety. How do you feel about the, the rule, what the league said, and now – how they're moving forward with it? Um, as far as the PI, um, I don't know. Like with, with with the rules and everything like that, each and every year, um, just gotta go play football. Like um, year to year, I really you know don't change how I play. So um, um, you know, you try to stay safe. You try to you know play within all the rules um, as far as breaking up passes, but. Um, just going out there and play play good football. Um, don't hold no um, you know no extra stuff. Um, just get the ball out. So um, you know I try not to worry about each and every um, you know each and every rule. Um, we get to camp. They give us the you know the rule sheet. Um, you, you see things that you want to work on, but um, I you know I don't let you know things like that you know affect my games or get into my head too much. All right, and last question, Dave Schrader, WBAY TV. Hey, Adrian, I was just going to piggyback on the question of fans and home field advantage. What part of home field advantage do you think the fans play and the noise plays, and maybe what percentage is just comfortability of knowing the building, being in your own town, not having to hop on a plane and all that? How much home field advantage do you think will be diminished if there aren't fans? Um, if there aren't fans, I mean – 
um, when you get to them, you know, third downs and everything like that, I, I really do think, um, you know, the stadium getting loud is a, you know, um, you know, is a plus for the defense um, in situations like that. So you have those home field advantages, but, um, you know, if there's no fans, period, you know, when, when you're going on the road, you know, they don't have that advantage either. So um, it just, you know, I, I feel like it's going to balance out in that way if we don't have fans at all. Um, but, you know, fans are, you know, a big part of the game. That gives, you know, a lot of the energy to the to the stadium. Um, you know, one thing that, that may have to happen is, um, you know, you know, I know when, you know, I was in college, we would go play like Purdue and, you know, um, it wasn't a lot of fans in the, in the stadium. And our coach would say, y'all got to bring your own juice today um, because, you know, there's no, you know, electricity in the crowd and, and things like that. So um, just, just coming in and being focused. Um, but I think it's going to balance out each way. So I, I don't feel like um, either team is going to have an advantage other than, the, you know, the obviously track the obvious traveling part.